You will get the most from any Systems to Win video when you launch it from its video home page. This is the fifth video in the seven video series for how to use your standard work instructions template. We're assuming that your leaders have already personalized your template, you already entered your default data and units of measure, you've entered your time observations, and you've clarified your work instructions. And you've even completed the first two types of standard work analysis for the as-is condition of your existing process. You analyze the operator workload balancing that currently exists, and you've performed value-add analysis to identify types of waste that exist in your current condition. And now you're ready for cycle analysis. And this is where you're going to learn, will your plans meet your goals? So first, let's get oriented. We are on the sample sheet of your standard work template. And we're going to assume that you've already done what you learned to do in the first videos and have already hidden those columns that you don't want to use. And then to get to the cycle analysis section of this template, we first need to scroll way down to this section below our main data entry area. And you will recognize that this is the same section that we talked about in our first training video, where you first entered your default units of measure and your default data in these pink double-bordered cells. And the very first thing that we need to talk about for cycle time analysis is this very first unit of measure for work time available. Every formula in this cycle time analysis section is based on your chosen unit of measure for work time available. Now in a production environment, that's usually a shift. But for the other 90% of processes that are in office, administrative, service, government, and medical, where nobody ever does anything for an entire shift, you would, in the formula bar, overwrite that unit of measure with a work time available unit of measure that's more appropriate for your process. And when you press the Enter key, rather than analyzing a shift, all of your work time available cycle analysis is in a unit of measure that's appropriate for the work time that's actually available for your unique process. And remember, we already covered that topic much more thoroughly in the first training video. So if you want to refresh your memory, you can go back at any time and watch that video again. So let's get on with the training for this video, where we're going to analyze whether or not your current plans will meet your goals. The very first question is, what's your goal? And tack time is one of the most important measures of a goal. Let's follow this link to our online training for tack time, which teaches us that tack time is your planning drumbeat. How often do completed units need to come out the end of your pipeline, of your process, as established by customer demand? The formula is, how many do your customers need and how much time do you have available to fill those needs? And again, as you already learned in the first training video, the unit of measure for your demand and your capacity might be patients or go-karts or widgets or whatever you deliver. And notice that tack time is a calculated field. In fact, all of the white cells in this section are calculated fields. You only enter data in those pink double border cells. Don't go accidentally overwriting your formulas. So for this next calculated field, let's click the pop-up help, where we see that process time per unit is the time that this thing being worked on is being worked on by any operator. And then that is divided by your demand. In other words, it's the same as this subtotal that we see at the top of the page here for time per unit. Or more correctly, it's the same as this next column, which is time per unit, multiplied by a factor to adjust for personal fatigue and delay. In other words, this process time per unit is the time per unit 
multiplied by whatever number you entered in this pink double bordered cell for personal fatigue and delay, which is an estimate of real world factors that prevent the perfection that you are observing out there with your stopwatch. And again, as we explained in the first video, if you don't want to consider personal fatigue and delay, you just enter a factor of one and then you hide that row. And just to tidy things more, we can scroll up and hide that column that adjusts for PFD. We think that's generally a bad idea, but it's your template to analyze your process your way. Let's click the pop-up help for the next calculated analysis field. And we see that the calculation for smallest possible staff is pretty simple. Process time per unit divided by tack time. In other words, if it takes a worker three hours to make something, and you have a customer demand that you need one every hour, you need three workers. Now, how many workers you actually have assigned to this process will automatically populate based upon the number of operators that you actually assigned in this first column. And that pop-up help also tells us that if you want to manually override that number of actual workers, uh, maybe some of those workers were part-time workers, not fully assigned to this process, then you can override. But if you manually override that formula that's in that cell, and you just go stick your number in there for the number of workers, that will work once, but from then on, you will have trashed the formula that automatically populates that field, and it'll be your responsibility to manually maintain it from then on. So the right way to do it is to select this override field just to the left and enter your actual number of workers there. And when you press the enter key, you have successfully overridden the number of workers without trashing the formula. Now the calculation for this next field is pretty simple. We've got 6.6 .6 seconds of process time per unit and we got three workers that means that our process time per worker must be 2.2 seconds. What makes this a whole lot more interesting though is the fact that it is bold italic red. What does that mean? That means that we've triggered our and on and the pop-up help for and ons tells us the percentages you enter in these fields determine when cells turn bold red italic to warn you of conditions that won't meet your goals. And the pop-up help for this process time and on says that if it's greater than this percentage that you entered, we're going to highlight it and bring it to your attention. It's usually between 85 and 100 percent. But what if you have a different threshold of tolerance for risk and you say, hey, I'm not worried about it within 85 percent. Just tell me if process time gets within 95 percent of tack time, then bring it to my attention. And when we press enter, it's the same number, but it's no longer bold red italic because it hasn't crossed your threshold where you begin to worry about it. And notice there are three and ons. The next one is for utilization. In this case, if utilization is greater than 85%, I want to know about it. And the pop-up help tells us the formula, but the short version is utilization is how much slack is in our schedule. What percent of time are my people working? How much freedom do they have to adjust for things that might go wrong? And the final calculation in this section is the big one. For most people, this is the bottom line question. Can we make as many as we need to make? And again, there's an and on for capacity. In this example, as long as it's 100%, as long as it's right on the money, that's good enough for this guy. But what if you have a different risk tolerance? And you say, hey, if capacity is not over 110% of our demand, I want to know about that. It's cutting it too close for me. Then when you press the enter key, capacity turns bold red italic because you're cutting it too close your current plan might not meet your goals. 
And finally, your pop-up help tells you that there are a couple of assumptions here. One is that the ratio of out of cycle work is going to stay consistent at different levels of demand. If that's not true, you might want to do different analyses for demand level at Christmas versus July and see does it stay consistent or not. And number two is that your work can be evenly divided among your workers. And you want to chart your operators to verify that. But that is the subject of the next video.